Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today we're doing Chapter 9, Part D, Compound Events. And this is the part where instead of just having one probability, we now have two probabilities. So basically there's two things happening. For example, on in one hand, on my left hand, I have a coin with two possibilities of tails and heads. And in my other hand, I have a die with a possibility of six uh, different things, which are basically one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so the possible problem here would be, well, let's just say I open my hands and then my coin falls down and my, uh, so this falls down, this falls down. So what's the chance that I'm going to get tails and number five? So what's the chance that I'm going to get tails and also number five? Probability of tails and probability of number five. And well, this may sound very simple and it actually is not very difficult. So basically here, uh, what is the probability of tails and probability of tails is 0.5. And what is the probability of 5? And that's obviously 0 0.16 or approximately 0 0.16. And so now um, I'm looking for the probability of both of these events happening at the same time. So what is the chance that I'm going to get both of these? And how do we find this? Well, we cross multiply them. It's as easy as just basically multiplying them together. And what you'll get is uh, the value will be uh, 0.5 multiplied by 0.16 which is approximately 0 0.08. And so the probability of both of these things happening at the same time is 0 0.08 or uh, approximately 8% chance. And this is the essence of the compound events. Now, the thing is, there's actually two types of compound events. There is something called independent events. And this is actually an example of an independent event. It's when two events occur independent of each other. They don't actually influence each other. So my coin does not influence my die and vice versa. There's no actual influence between them. They're independent. And there's obviously something called dependent, dependent event. And that is when one of my or both of my uh, events influence each other. So for example, if I get um, one event, my other event will change. So dependent event is a little bit more complicated. It's when one of my events will influence the other. We'll take a look at it in a second, but before that, let's just take a look at another example of independent events. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of two different people. Let's just say it's John and Steven, and they're tossing a die. Both of them have a die and they're both tossing a die. So um, each of these two guys are doing it independently. So this is an independent event. And essentially, um, both of them have an equal chance of getting a number. So let's just say we want to find out what is the probability that John will get a two and Steven will get a three. So what is the probability here? So what we want to write is we want to write a probability of John and Steven. And the probability here equals to probability of John and multiplied by probability of Steven. So in other words, it's, uh, we know that this is one six and this is one six. So it's one six times one six. So the probability here will be one, keeps doing that, one divided by 36. And this is our uh, probab probability of both, both of these guys getting these specific numbers. So probability that John will get a two and probability that Steven will get a three is one out of 36. All right, so now let's take a look at an example of dependent uh, compound event, and we're gonna use John and Steven again, or actually just John. John is going to be picking uh, picking numbers out of a bag. So uh, here is the bag with, let's just say once again, six numbers, just like that, there's six numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, and these are numbered, of course. Now, first question is, what is the chance that John is going to get a two again? Well, the chance for the first try is one out of six. So uh, the first chance when he picks the first number is one out of six. So let's just say he picked it. Now, what is the chance now after he picks this and it's removed from the bag that he is now going to get a three? So now that there is actually five marbles left inside, the chance is uh, has decreased. It's actually now not one out of six, but one out of five. So the question here would be, um, what is the chance that on the first try John gets a two and on the second try John get, gets a three? And to get this particular question, what we need to do is we're looking at uh, a dependent event where first he takes out a number and then probability changed and he takes out a second number and probability changed again. Um, so here you're looking at one divided by six multiplied by one 
divided by 5, which is actually 1 out of 30. So here the probability is different. It's not no longer 1 out of 36, it's actually 1 out of 30. Um, to make this a little bit more clear, let's just say that he keeps removing uh, numbers. So let's just say he removes the first number, and the chance to remove the first number when there are six marbles in there, let's just say that, what is the probability of getting one out of six? And the answer is one out of six. And now we are actually losing one of these numbers, so this is actually gone. Uh, so he, he does it again, let's, let's just say he picks a number again. So what is the chance that he's going to get a two now? Well, there's only five marbles left in there, so the chance is one out of five. And then this marble is removed again. Now, what is the chance that he's going to get a three? There's uh, four numbers in there, so it's one out of four, and so on and so forth. So the chance to get a four after that is going to be one out of three. And finally, the last number is going to be one out of two, or the one before the last. And the last number is obviously 100%, or the chance is one. And this is an example of dependent probability. So it's it's when probability changes, compound probability changes because something has occurred. And before we finish, let's take a look at example 11 from page 274. And this is an example of dependent uh, compound event. So here we have a box containing four red. I'm just, let me just draw that box. We have a box with four red and two yellow tickets. Um, and they're randomly selected from the box without replacement. So the the word without replacing here, without replacing refers to the fact that uh, it is the dependent event, meaning that probability changes once you replace your, or remove one of the tickets. And the first question is this, find the probability that both of the tickets that you remove are red. So first time you pick the ticket, first time, the chance of picking a red ticket is four out of six, because there's four red tickets and six tickets in total. So this is the first probability. Uh, this, uh, so now that you've removed that ticket, so I'm, let me just erase it. Now that you've removed the first red ticket, there is now five tickets left. So the second probability is going to be, this is, oops, this is going to be multiplied by, multiplied by five. Oh, by, sorry, divided by five. Uh, and how many red tickets are left here? Well, we have three red tickets left. So the answer to A here is, uh, 12 divided by 30. So the chance of getting both tickets that are red is 12 out of 30. Um, let's take a look at part B. And the question is, the first is red and the second is yellow. So we're removing the first ticket and that's four out of six again. I'm gonna erase my first ticket. And what we have left now is five tickets, three of them are red, two of them yellow. And the second one is yellow. So what is the chance that we're gonna get a yellow ticket on the second try? Well, it's two out of five multiplied by two out of five, and the answer here is eight out of 30. So the answer for the second question is eight out of 30. So this would be an example of compound dependent event. All right, so that is it in a nutshell. This is how the compound events work. Uh, independent events are a little bit easier. Independent events are usually a little bit more challenging, but it will come to you with practice. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye-bye.